tempting fate takes on a new meaning when you dare to steal from Mexican cartels. Five audacious souls thought they could dance with danger only to discover that playing with fire leaves more than scorched fingers. Buckle up for heists gone wild and bone-chilling lessons in regret. Number 1. Martin Alejandro Cota Monroy, October 10th, 2010. Things took a dark turn in a quiet suburban neighborhood of Phoenix. The police were alerted by concerned neighbors and rushed towards an apartment only to be confronted with a truly horrifying scene. Martin's lifeless body lay on the floor of his own apartment, his head separated from his body and tossed a few feet away. Further police investigation revealed that he had suffered a brutal attack. He'd been bludgeoned and stabbed in the head, and his hands bore the marks of a desperate struggle to defend himself. According to the police report, it turned out that Martin had made a grave mistake. He had stolen 400 pounds of marijuana from a notorious Mexican drug cartel. As you can imagine, that wasn't an act they would take lightly. The cartel was so enraged that they crossed the border into Arizona, determined to hunt him down and make him pay for his audacity. And boy, did they make him pay. Initially, the cartel had discovered Cota Monroy's theft and had planned to kidnap and kill him in Nogales, Mexico. However, However, he managed to talk his way out of immediate death. He promised to repay the money he had stolen and even offered his house as collateral. The only problem was the house didn't actually belong to him. So in a desperate bid to save his own skin, he fled to Phoenix, hoping to find safety in this bustling city. But the cartel wasn't about to let him go so easily. They were determined to exact their revenge. So they sent their cold-blooded assassins to Phoenix, disguised as friendly faces, ready to befriend and ultimately eliminate Cota Monroy. The police have disclosed that the cartel Martin had stolen from is recognized as the PEI Estatales El Chapo Drug Trafficking Organization. It's also been discovered that he was involved in drug trafficking on behalf of his sister's lover, known as El Jefe, who worked for that cartel. Cris Santos Morioki had been charged with murder, while three others are believed to have fled to Mexico. According to police reports, the Beltran Leva Organization, a rival drug cartel, may be planning to retaliate by targeting the three individuals responsible for the killing, as Martin was allegedly a mid-level member of this drug cartel. The lead detective heading the investigation described the crime scene as nothing short of horrifying and said that it sent a chilling message. Not only would cartels take your life, but they would also dismember your body to serve as a warning to anyone who dared to cross them. He also said this case could be the only beheading known in the U.S. carried out by a cartel. Decapitations are a regular part of the drug war in Mexico. Headless bodies have been dangled from bridges by their feet, and severed heads have been sent to victims' family members and government officials. However, this violent incident wasn't the only one in the United States tied to drug trafficking. 2009, members of a Mexican drug trafficking group were indicted for the murders of nine individuals in the San Diego area, including two victims whose bodies were dissolved in acid. And that's not all, because it certainly wasn't the last. Number 2. Ricardo Coral Moreno April 14, 2019 A truck hauling a horse trailer departed from a ranch in Molaya and made its way down to a dimly lit side of the countryside after midnight. Shortly after that, a motorcyclist stumbled upon the lifeless body of a man laying in the middle of the westbound lane of South Liberal Way. The man was lying on his back with his arms and legs spread out like a snow angel. According to investigators, Marcos Alonso Castillo Bernal a drug trafficker had discarded the body of Ricardo after kidnapping him from Washington and subjecting him to a brutal beating at a secluded ranch. Ricardo was killed because he refused to pay a staggering $90,000 for drugs, a significant portion of which was owed to the notorious Sinaloa cartel. The cause of his death was determined to be blunt force trauma to the back of his head, along with various abrasions and contusions to his face, arms, hands, legs, and feet. The kidnapping and fatal beating occurred occurred after months of extortion and threats against Corral Moreno and his family. But Ricardo believed he was safe in the U.S., thinking the cartels couldn't reach him there. However, he should have known better that cartels don't leave unfinished business. The Sinaloa cartel sent four Mexican gang members to Oregon to deal with them. And according to prosecutors, Ricardo was initially held captive in an apartment before being moved to Malaya Ranch, where he was tortured and mercilessly murdered. Those four men were never brought to justice. 
justice. But what about Castillo Bernal, the man who was caught on the video dumping the body? In his plea agreement, Castillo Bernal confessed to being aware that Coral Moreno was held against his will at the ranch from April 10th to April 13th, 2019. Due to a drug debt, he admitted to assisting in guarding Coral Moreno and disposing of his body, but denied any involvement in the kidnapping or killing. He explained that he didn't leave the ranch or disobey orders out of fear for safety of himself and his family. During the court proceedings, the victim's sister expressed her desire for Castillo Bernal to spend the rest of his life in prison for the pain he inflicted on her family. But Castillo Bernal ended up receiving a 26-year prison sentence. He was charged with conspiracy to commit kidnapping, resulting in death conspiracy to possess drugs with intent to distribute, and illegally re-entering the U.S. twice after being previously deported. Due to concerns for his safety and his family's safety in Mexico, Castillo Bernal chose not to disclose the identities of others involved. His lawyer claimed that he was also a victim of the cartel's oppression. So what's your take on that? And speaking of conflicting thoughts, wait till you hear about the next person on this list. Number 3. Barney Harris. April 8th, 2021. Tragedy struck when a teacher and basketball coach from a North Carolina school lost his life in a shooting incident. It turns out that he was attempting to rob the home of a member of a Mexican drug cartel. The incident took place in Green Level, about 30 miles northwest of Greensboro. Multiple calls reporting gunfire led deputies to the scene on Wyatt Road in the early hours of the morning. They discovered two lifeless bodies at this scene. Barney Harris, a beloved basketball coach at Union Academy in Monroe, was highly regarded by his students and colleagues. However, it came to light that he had a dark side, being involved in the treacherous and lethal world of drug trafficking. The Alamans County Sheriff expressed his concerns, stating that when dealing with Mexican drug cartels, fatalities are almost inevitable. According to the police, Harris and his brother-in-law, Stephen Alexander Stewart, ventured to a mobile home park area on Wyatt Road in Green Level with the intention of stealing money and drugs from a stash house belonging to the Jalisco New Generation Cartel. We already know this organization is one of the most powerful and deadliest drug trafficking organizations in the world. Authorities have reported that the dynamic duo broke into their trailer, only to be interrupted by a member of the notorious cartel, 18-year-old Alonzo Beltran Lara. Things quickly took a turn for the worst when they confronted Lara about the hidden stash. Frustrated by his lack of cooperation, they callously shot him in the head, execution style, where his hands and legs were bound. As chaos ensued, other cartel members arrived on scene, resulting in a hail of gunfire. Tragically, Harris, later discovered lifeless in a bedroom by the police, fell victim to this crossfire. It's worth noting that Harris was actually wearing a bulletproof vest, but unfortunately it proved ineffective against the ammunition used by the cartel members. No one else sustained injuries during the shootout, although three other trailers were struck by stray bullets. Detectives have reason to believe that Harris and Stewart managed to track down the cartel members using some sort of electronic device prior to the violent encounter. Stewart was apprehended a few days after the incident and was charged with armed robbery and first-degree murder. But in the end, we can't help but find this case truly baffling. Mr. Harris, a teacher and coach with a seemingly fulfilling life, caught up in such a heinous mess. How does that even happen? All in all, by now it's crystal clear that messing with Mexican cartels is a one-way ticket for trouble. But here's a twist. What's your take on a guy who would not only swipe from him, but also have the audacity to boast about it? Number 4. Eric Tadeo Ramirez March 24th, 2023 Things took a wild turn for Eric from Laredo, Texas. This man had the audacity to brag about swiping $50,000 from a Mexican drug cartel. And as expected, they didn't take too kindly to that. According to court documents, members of the notorious Cartel de Noreste, a seriously powerful criminal organization, allegedly kidnapped Ramirez right from his own home and took him to Mexico, where he's still missing to this day. It was just past midnight when a group of men, allegedly belonging to the Cartel de Noreste, arrived at the house in a blue pickup truck in the Texan border city of Laredo. The men, all wearing masks and carrying guns, stormed the house and grabbed Ramirez. 
From there, they went to the port of entry and crossed the border into Nuevo Laredo, Mexico. Before crossing, Ramirez tried to escape, but unfortunately, luck wasn't on his side that night. The surveillance footage revealed a masked individual opening the front passenger door of a moving blue Dodge Ram truck. Authorities stationed at the bridge confirmed that the person attempted to exit the vehicle but was forcefully restrained. Later that night, Ramirez's girlfriend and sister contacted law enforcement to report the case of abduction. But what's really surprising is that witnesses informed the police that on the night of March 23rd, Ramirez engaged in a phone conversation with an unknown woman. During that call, he boasted about successfully stealing $50,000 from the Cartel del Noreste. He bragged to the woman on that phone that he was currently in Laredo and faced no fear or danger because he was in the United States. Several days later, on March 27th, U.S. authorities apprehended Jonathan Cabriales, an alleged member of the Cartel de Noreste, at the very same border crossing that connects Nuevo Laredo in Mexico with Laredo, Texas. Cabriales was attempting to re-enter the U.S. in the same pickup truck that was used to abduct Ramirez. During questioning, Cabriales admitted that they kidnapped Ramirez because he had stole around $50,000 from that cartel. However, other individuals involved in that kidnapping are still out there, and Ramirez Ramirez's whereabouts remain unknown. And unfortunately, Ramirez wasn't the only American citizen to fall victim to the cartel this year. March 5th, four U.S. citizens were kidnapped, and tragically, two of them were killed shortly after crossing the Texas border into Mexico. The Americans had arrived in the border city of Matamoros, Tamaulipas, when a group of armed assailants unleashed a barrage of bullets on their vehicle. Disturbing footage captured the attack's aftermath, which occurred in broad daylight. The video showed armed armed men forcibly placing a woman into the back of a white pickup truck while the other three Americans were dragged and loaded into the same truck. Sadly, two of the victims were discovered deceased the following day inside an abandoned shed on the outskirts of Matamoros. The remaining two survivors were found and promptly transported to a hospital in the U.S. on the very same day. In a stunning twist, the Scorpions faction of the Gulf Cartel issued an unexpected statement offering apologies to the residents of Matamoros for the Americans were abducted and extending their remorse to the American government. But that's not all. They're taking it a step further. They made a daring move, handing over the very individuals who orchestrated the events. Their defense? Blaming it on personal choices and a lack of restraint. They even went on record saying that they held high regard for the lives and well-being of the innocent. But can we really take these claims at face value? Well, we highly doubt it, especially after finding out how they treated those they suspected of stealing, only to discover they were innocent in the end. And number five, torture unleashed at a whim. The Minneapolis-St. Paul metropolitan area is quite a distance from the home base of Mexico's notorious Sinaloa drug cartel. However, that didn't deter three enforcers from that cartel who made their way up to that region with a mission to track down two teenagers. These youngsters were accused of stealing drugs and money from a stash house and the cartel was determined to make them pay. According to reports, the three enforcers were dispatched from LA to St. Paul under orders from the Sinaloa cartel. Their objective was to locate the culprits responsible for snatching 30 pounds of meth amphetamine and $200,000 from a stash house in St. Paul. Once the cartel hitmen captured the two teens, things took a dark turn. The youngsters were subjected to torture and threats against their lives and the lives of their families. The kidnappers demanded that the victims either retrieve the missing drugs or come up with the hefty sum of $300,000 to compensate the cartel. To make things worse for them, the kidnappers warned the teenagers that failure to comply would result in the brutal murder of their entire family. When the victims encountered obstacles in meeting those demands, the torture and beatings intensified. However, as time went on, the victims overheard the kidnappers speculate that someone within the cartel might actually be responsible for the theft. This revelation shifted suspicions towards others who had knowledge of the stash house. 
By morning, the terrified teens received unexpected news. They would be released and were sternly warned not to utter a word about their ordeal. The two were driven back to South Minneapolis and released early that afternoon. They quickly reached out to agents from the FBI task force. Within a few hours, agents and local police were debriefing them. Later that same night, the St. Paul Police SWAT unit stormed the house on Palace Avenue. They made several arrests and thoroughly searched the rooms for evidence. According to federal authorities who cracked the case, they weren't surprised by the zero-tolerance approach of the Sinaloa cartel. This cartel has officially built a multi-million dollar drug trade in the Midwest. But what made this mission shocking, however, was that instead of relying on their own muscle, the cartel hired members of one of the most feared transnational gangs in the US and Latin America, the MS-13 organization. Federal investigators state that this incident is unprecedented in Minnesota. It serves as a clear indication of the extreme measures cartels are willing to take to protect their local operations. Despite the case concluding without any casualties, the two unfortunate teenagers were left with lifelong scars from their near-death experience. And these scars weren't just psychological. One of the teens almost had a finger completely cut off, and the gang even threatened to chop off their hands. And actually, this method of punishing thieves is not new to Mexican cartels. December 11, 2020. A horrifying incident unfolded in the town of Salau, located 20 miles south of Leon, Mexico. A woman, aged 22, and two men, aged 23 and 25, were found with their hands brutally chopped off. The perpetrators behind this gruesome act were believed to be the feared Jalisco New Generation Cartel, who accused the victims of theft. Local residents were left in a state of panic as the trio was dumped alongside a highway accompanied by a bag containing their severed limbs. A chilling note signed by the cartel warned that anyone caught stealing would suffer the same fate. Immediate medical assistance was sought and paramedics rushed the critically injured victims to a nearby hospital. In a desperate attempt to save their hands, the paramedics even carried them in an ice bag, hoping for a successful reattachment. Unfortunately, that proved impossible. Law enforcement authorities arrived at scene and initiated an investigation. Although no arrests have been made thus far, the victims also revealed they had endured physical beatings in addition to having their hands severed. The JNGC, known for their extreme violence, has a history of engaging in cannibalistic acts as part of their initiation rituals. They rose to infamy after being enlisted by El Chapo's Sinaloa cartel as foot soldiers in their battle against Los Zetas. Since then, the CJNG has established a vast drug-running network spanning the entire Mexican coastline. Currently, it's considered the second most powerful cartel in Mexico, trailing only behind the Sinaloa cartel. If you're interested in hearing about another horrifying incident involving two men who dared to steal from the Sinaloa cartel and ended up facing a fate worse than death itself, then you definitely need to watch this video.